What's going on, golf addicts? It is the Tour Junkies betting show. DB with you. We're talking RBC Heritage. We're doing some Masters recap, and I got my boy Gutsy Picks Cash. You know it's the it's the hottest thumbnail that I think I've ever seen. Oh. Gutsy, you look, we look great in that thumbnail. That is the greatest. That's the greatest thumbnail maybe in the history of thumbnails. Mm -hmm. I'm not even kidding. When I saw that thumbnail, I almost dropped that. I always make the joke, you know. Be careful with with bringing your girlfriends, your wives around these kinds of shows. But that yeah. that 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 thumbnail right there shows exactly why. It's uh, credit to whoever made that. You know, my boy Toby, shout out, um, oh. gutsy. You know, coming at us live from the Sobet Studios there in Nashville, yeah. Tennessee. I mean, the two guys on that thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I, if those two guys walked up in some bar loaded down with, you know whatever at a bar in nashville how yeah. well would they do listen i'm not gonna get too graphic too in deep i'm just saying this they would absolutely clean up okay it would be yeah. um it would be a full game shutout it would be unbelievable what we would do out there yeah i, I would say a no hitter for sure maybe a perfect oyster. game Pot, what world would be our oyster yeah um by the way, thanks for looking like a looking like a a, a freaking you know VIP at the World Baseball Hall of Fame yeah. season ticket holder guy I, in my golf show. I appreciate yeah, no. That. So I looked at a couple of things. Uh, I had the Tiger red on. Yeah. It it just didn't really feel right for me to wear it. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna make sure everybody knows. Um, because again, this is a golf show, but golf, baseball, they kind of correlate. They're kind of like brother sister. Right, that's the way that I look at it. What you don't okay. look at it like that? I mean, that's a weird take, weird thing to say, but that that's that's normal uh, for you. Um, I, I do I'm have to get, I do have to address the elephant in the room. Is everybody's going? Where's Pat? Well, listen, um, it's mm. it's the Monday after Masters, people, and I promise you, if I could, if I could, you know, if I could bury my boy Pat, I would. But let me just say. You, you know, remember when, uh, remember one of my favorite parts of the hangover is when, uh, when what's his name goes missing in this it's hangover too. Right. And it's in, um, Dr. What's his name says Bangkok has him now, you know, like when they can't find him and he's just gone, like Bangkok's absorbed him. He's done. Yeah. You know, like, like masters has him now. Okay. Just he's, he's, it, or if you're like a stranger things fan, you know, and, and he's like in the, what, what, what they call like the underworld or whatever. I'm, I'm I'm bad with this because I've never seen Stranger Things. You haven't? Oh, it's a great show, and I hate sci-fi stuff, but it's a great show. Yeah, see, I'm I'm not a sci-fi guy either. That's why I, I hate sci-fi stuff, but it, it is actually really good. But anyway, like, it, it, just trust me when I say Pat needed a, a day. Okay, Pat needed a, a a mental health Pat Perry day, and I know you're thinking, guys, it's the day after the Masters, it's the RBC Heritage. What are we doing? But I I promise you, just if you're a tour junkies fan, be a fan, okay, and give Pat some love and just take it easy, okay. He'll be back next week. Just chill, and he'll be in the Discord. He's already been in the Discord today, I believe. So he'll be there. He'll be there. But I'm happy to have our boy Gutsy Picks Cash step up and fill in, and appreciate you stepping up and filling in because normally we're doing a show. Me and me and Gutsy do shows together for Sobet, and we do yeah. the the Golf Gurus and Gamblers show, which is a wonderful show. And Great you and show. I. Have had a, a lot of great times doing that, but we've never had you in our, at, at, you know, in our stadium, at our, at our, at our hometown, at no, our home I've course. Never, I've never been blessed. Never been given the opportunity. Yeah, I've been waiting though, just waiting for it's it. It's kind of. I'm sorry that that's the case. We should have had you on a long time ago. No, but, no worries. I've been waiting on the end of the bench though, just ready for my number to get called. It got called. Boom, I'm there. And you're ready. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about the Masters, buddy, because you and I did golf gurus and gamblers last week, and we yeah. made a bet. We we made a bet. Yeah. Yeah. Um now I would say that, you know, neither performance in our masters bet was particularly awesome. I mean, one of my guys got last place. I think that's the headline is like there was a winner, neither particularly awesome. Yes. You know, one of your guys did get last DFL, although he did make the cut, which we said, we said on the show. It's, I think it was like minus 104, minus 105. Yeah, but remember, then we said, forget about that. We we want nothing to do with that. We're going to take Tiger with Phil Mickelson 
plus 300. Easy. To make the cut? Easy, yes. And then, and then Phil screwed us. What do you no, mean? No, Phil didn't screw us. Oh, yeah, no. we did take that. We hit that bet. Yes, we cashed it. Dude, I did, I, 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 I did we, five we, shows. I did what? five shows and a live chat on Wednesday of Masters. So I can't I, I, Listen, I can't keep all of it straight. But that was good. Good job on us, though. Yeah, no, shout out us and credit, credit to us, credit to me. Okay, I play poker Wednesday nights. That night I was out playing poker. I told all the I told all the boys at the poker table, hey, look, we, we got this play. And I, I don't say this lightly. This I got a play that can't lose. <laughs> a play that cannot lose. Yeah. That's Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson making the cut. And I don't ever parlay. I don't ever promote parlays. It was just the most no-brainer bet of all time. This is the I, whole time. I, I'm glad to remember now that we hit that. So uh, good job on us. But our bet specifically, me versus Gutsy, was we each drafted. We, we did a draft. We had to draft three players that were top 20s plus money. And um, I hit one top 20. It was Cam Young. Um, my boy, my boy Shane, Shane Lowry, and I think it was uh, who who was my third one? Sahith. I think Sahith was my third one. Tagala. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those guys did not, they did not do, they did not top 20. Uh, you, sir, had Eldrick Woods, who finished DFL for the weekend at 60th. And I laughed at you. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also had Russell Henley. And then you had somebody who missed the cut, right? Adult, I had adult braces. You had, oh no, you had Fitzpatrick. Oh yeah, I was sweating him a little bit. On yeah, Sunday. my guy had adult, adult braces. He was your first pick. Yeah, first overall, and he led the team well. He did what he was supposed to out there. He left it all in the course. Now, Tiger Woods, I, I don't really know what happened. In retrospect, though, when you think about it, you think about the four days, the gruel at Augusta. Do you, in retrospect, do you kind of wish you wouldn't have made that bet with him? I, that was definitely a bet with my heart. It was yeah. uh, very emotional. A lot of emotions yeah. on the table there. But I wanted to take you down, and I wanted to take you down with my guy. Okay. So, you know, I tried. I did what I could. Okay. okay. Listen, I would have loved to take someone more chalky, right? I'm not I'm not a chalky I mean, guy. You did take Henley. Okay. Henley was actually kind of chalky. Hen Henley was... He was value a chalky. play. Value play. I mean, I'm just telling you, he was chalky. You could call him a value play, but he you, was chalky. You could call him chalky if you want. I didn't play him because I, I I knew to avoid bad chalk. But but I'm but I'm a golf guy. I mean, I get it. You cover all sports. It's okay. Um, well, Shane 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 Lowry. I mean, again, dude, say what you want. He had no business being there. Okay, brother, brother. <laughs> no, no business. <laughs> Shane Lowry led click put 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 your fingers in your ears and like clean no. I want you to make sure you hear this right. No, no, I'm right here. I want you to make sure you hear this correctly. I'm right here. Shane Jacob Lowry. Okay. I just feel like Jacob is probably uh, we, Tony, can you look up his middle name? I'm just guessing. Yeah, that, 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 he, that can't be right. He Go looks ahead. like a Shane Jacob to me. Shane is is Jacob a good Irish name? Uh, you should. Uh, um, is Shane a good Irish name? Is Shane, Shane is, really Irish? Shane. is he really Irish? Shame it. No, no that is a, not shameless. It's S H A N E, like a regular American Shane. Oh, Thomas. I was kind of close. Like Jacob and Thomas are kind of close. Okay. All right. Shane, I, mean, Thomas, I guess they're, they're right there. I'll give it to you. Shane okay. Thomas Lowry. What that isn't, there's no way he's really Irish. What if he's like fake Irish this whole time? Yeah, that, that is that is about the most American name of all time. Yeah. Like anyway. he's from like Alabama or something. <laughs> yeah. Shane Thomas Lowry led the field mm -hmm. at the Masters in strokes gained approach and finished not top 20. Yeah. He, he led the field gutsy. Yeah. What is Augusta National, if anything, but a second shot golf course? That's the approach play. Shane Lowry led the field. He if I told you yesterday at the end of the Green Jacket ceremony, when you were victory lapping how bad Shane Lowry played, yeah. that that Shane Lowry beat Scotty Scheffler in strokes gained approach. I mean 
of, of, co- of course, because I was watching it. I was watching the Shane Lowry absolute meltdown. Anytime they showed Shane Lowry on TV, it genuinely was not something great. But well, he holed out on fourteen. I I, that's the only happened. thing that they showed that was good. It, it, it was not. Uh, it wasn't great for for Shane. He finished T forty three. Anyway, I won the bet because I had a guy in the top twenty in Cam Young. You did not. You had none. Um, so you have now. You owe me dinner, right? Yeah, yeah. Eat dinner. I will say this. Speaking of other bets, and we're going to talk more about the Masters. Sure. I I, I now implore your help, gutsy. Because me and Pat have a season long bet going on. Okay. And um, by the way, I should have prefaced this. If if people are expecting order and structure and you know n- like a lack of tomfoolery on the show, you can you can just go ahead and watch something else because this it's is the Monday. Point. This is the Monday after Masters, and I'm on with Gutsy. So we're just this is gonna yeah. be all over the place. Um Okay, we have this season long bet where every week we each pick a fade. Okay. And the fade has to be shorter. It has to be 30 to one or shorter. So we're picking one of the favorites to fade. Okay. okay. We we say why. Okay. And then we've got a spreadsheet adding up the amount of, of money earned on the course from those fades at every tournament. Okay? okay. So then the loser at the end of the regular season is the person whose fades have made the most money. Right. Okay. Interesting. So you don't want you don't want a lot of money. Right. Yeah. Tony, do you have the totals available? This is where we stand currently through the Masters. Oh, you're my gotcha. my fades have made six point seven million dollars. <laughs> Pat's fades have made two point three million. He had Patrick Cantlay. No, I'm sorry. I had Patrick Cantlay as a fade last week. He finished twenty second. Still somehow made two hundred thousand dollars. Still made a lot of money. And Pat had Wyndham Clark, who missed the cut. Which I argue, did you know that even a missed cut at Augusta National, at the Masters, they give you ten grand. I demand that ten grand be added to Pat's total here. Oh, absolutely. The loser of this bet, we spun the wheel at the beginning of the year. Okay. The loser of this bet has to attend, has to travel somewhere to a, attend a very uh, undesirable concert, like a terrible concert, maybe embarrassing concert weird concert by themselves other than someone there basically strictly to help document the the experience so right now it's looking like in the fall i I, i'm gonna be coming i gotta find some sort of concert to go to so tony yes gutsy can we get some suggestions for you because i've thrown out a couple i've thrown out 98 degrees i've thrown out third eye blind and i've also unironically thrown out creed because Creed oh. coming to my hometown, and I'm yeah. definitely going to see them. So. Listen, I, I would actually. I mean, I'm, I got to be real here. I'm a man of integrity. I would love to go see Creed with you. Hey. I, like, I, Creed would not work for me. Hey. Yeah, we can't do Creed. And that, that's I do like that man of honor, integrity, hand up. Creed. I don't, I don't actually know off the top of my head where you, what you could go see that could be uh, relatively bad, unless. I mean, Nickelback. You guys, Nickelback guys. I mean. Nickelback wouldn't be like I wouldn't even hate Nickelback to be honest, but I know Nickelback's a very hot topic in the streets. Well, I, I don't want to comment because I I'm. What about Taylor Swift? That's dude. We tour junkies, dude. Do you, you're on with the tour junkies. You're not. This is not a barstool show. We don't have the budget to go see a Taylor Swift. Oh, listen, no, there was no budget thrown out there. I'm just okay. Well, I can tell you right now, I ain't got the budget to go see Taylor. We need about a hundred thousand more viewers on this video to get. To get to see a Taylor Swift show. Okay, everybody, share this to a friend because we have to get the shares up starting now. But uh, we'll put we'll put Taylor Swift on the back burner. Then that's fine. I I would I'm gonna really try to think of a good one. There, there there's gotta be something even in Nashville. Oh, that, I would love that. I would yeah, love that. that you guys would like come to, and we could make a whole thing out of it because there's a lot of spots where you can listen to bad music in Nashville for sure. We would just have to think of a, a good one when it's like a weird, ba- maybe like a Christian concert or something. What if, it, what if it's like a what if it's like a dude in Nashville that's only only popular because he's like super handsome, but he really sucks, and I'm there with like a bunch of teeny boppers or something. You know, I mean, that could I'm be not, so, that could be something on the table, I suppose. 
I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna lose. So I, the the majors Here's were my. Like, this is a this is an absolute. This is a route. What? What? This is a route. This is this is you're getting below oh, getting, now. Right yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I know. What 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 are? What are by the way, ten grand should be added to Pat's total. Thank you. That that mm-hmm. is insane that you get ten grand just for being cut. But uh, I. I and and so this is what we're doing this week because Pat's not here. This is actually probably dumb for me because this is a signature event. Yes, Pat, it is. Pat's not going to have time to do any research. The the winner at this event is going to get paid more than Scotty Scheffler just did to win the Masters. Uh, by the way, what other show do you know of golf show that waits almost sixteen minutes before they say the winner of the Masters? Welcome to the Tour Junkies. We're the best show around. Um, but. I I probably should take a mail-in ballot vote of of Pat this week. You know, I had to be out with my wife's stuff going on a couple weeks ago. I sent in a pick, sure. you know, and, and then, of course, that pick won like 400 grand that week or whatever. And so I, sh- I probably should have Pat send in a pick. But probably. I am so beat down that I am taking the – I am making the executive decision that we're just not going to do it. I am going to switch up the mojo. Pat's mojo is running. He's, I mean, I, what's another sports analogy to this, uh, Gutsy? He's on this streak right now. He's seeing the ball, man. The ball's just, he's in there, and he just sees it. He sees the spin. He's the dialed. Ball. He's hes like Adderalled out. He sees exactly what the pitch is doing. What, oh, that's a change up. As soon as it leaves his hand, that's a fastball. He is seeing it right now. And, and I just need him to not see it for a week and change it up. And we'll be back next week. And we'll get the picks. But this week, I feel like I should just fade the whole segment and try to hopefully start over. What do you think? I mean, some could say you're running. Some some could say you're scared. I personally, yeah, I was on the sidelines as and I and I've been sweating this out. I would demand that that Pat gave a pick this week. I would demand it. Okay, well, you know, it could only affect you also. So I'm surprised that you want to that you're running like this. You want to hide hide in the corner, in the fetal position. I'm surprised by it. I mean, you 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 need Pat to get more money here. You're running I, out of time. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a beat down abused animal. Okay, oh, and I yeah and, and, for sure. And I just I'm I'm skittish. So I don't know. Yes. I think I'm gonna I think I think I'm I'm sticking with my gut. My gut said I'm just gonna bow out this week, and I'm gonna let the momentum crash. And. We got to keep making it up. It's not early, gutsy. We're still. We have three majors left. We have. Yeah. We have more signature events left. But okay? the the spacing of the money is. I know. It, you're you're losing a good sample size of yourself. You want an example? I'll give you an example. I lost, and again, I'm not trying to bring us back to poker. This is a golf show. I, I lost my first five sessions of poker this month, and okay. then I had a really good session last week. And I basically recouped all the losses for the month. You could do something like that. I could, yeah. I not. I almost didn't go on that Wednesday. I said, you know, I might not go this week. And I've had a bad last couple of weeks. I might not go this week. I said, you know, I'm going to go this week. I went instantly, flopped a boat, shove, shove, call, twelve over $1,200 pot. It was really nice. And then just went on to have a, a great night session. Want, want a lot, all of it back, basically. That's something that you're just not giving yourself a chance to do here. You're, you're running. You're looking at adversity, and you're running away from it. That's all That's all I'll say about it. Not my DB. Not my DB. But that's okay. Maybe you've changed a little bit. Maybe you've gotten softer over time. I haven't seen you in a while. Maybe you've gotten softer. Kids are getting older. DB's getting softer. It's all right. Dude, don't, don't, don't start with me on the age stuff on my own show. I will kick your ass out of here and do the rest of it by myself. I'm just saying. Um, speaking of... Speaking of of losses, uh, sure. and let's let's bring it back to the recap of the Masters. <laughs> uh, I heard that other than just losing to me and my bet, which by the way, I don't even think we talked about this, Gus. So you and I have had very few head to head bets, right? But when I was in Nashville last summer, we had some bets on the golf course. You did not hit a single bet against me the entire weekend on the golf course. Then we do it again last week, and you lose. Aside from that, okay. I heard that your master's bets last week didn't go well. And, you know, we're all here to recap the master's a little bit. Let's let's all sit in it, talk about what we hit, what we didn't hit, what we noticed, what we thought about things. 
Tell me about how that went down for you, bub. So uh, I, I, you know, respectfully treat the masters like I treat the Super Bowl. It's what I do with basically every major in golf. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to make money, but I'm also trying to hit some absolute bombs. So, you know, I was, I was spraying the board on first round leader, second round leader, third round. I'll tell you right now. Oh, for 17 on round leaders this week. I mean, and, and never really came bet. back. Let's see. That is a terrible. EV no, I, I, and listen, and I know that again, but like the Super Bowl, I like to fire on the Gatorade color. Of, I think, I think. See, so I, I only do it for the majors. And I'm just trying to hit some absolute, but I'm just trying to have some fun. But why not do like a little, you know, do a little um, uh, like a, a May Cup parlay or a three ball parlay I, every round or something I, like I, that? See, I, I did a couple of those, right? I did the fill with the Tiger. But I, I, but DB, when I'm trying, every year in the Super Bowl, I bet a lineman to score a touchdown. You want to know why? Because not because it's probably going to happen, but because it's plus ten thousand odds. And if it does happen, I want to be there for it. So when the Masters comes around, I'm trying to find that guy that's in the rough. And I'll tell you right now, every every day, I would craft a big three. Okay, so I would craft a big three that I would place my biggest bets on to finish the round in first place. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you right now, DB, the big three on Friday and Saturday at one point. We're all either tied for the lead or one shot uh -huh. off the lead. So you and thought. all of them, including one of them, was going to be a, a, almost a $1,200, $1,500 cash. And they just all collapsed every single time. And when, when Scotty, the most heartbreaking thing to watch was when Scotty Scheffler bogeyed his way all the way down to four under. And then in a blink of an eye, back to seven under. Yeah. It was the most disheartening thing ever to watch because it truly felt like this is our chance. I mean, just, same. I had Max Homa at 75 to one and me and Pat got into the biggest, I don't know, you know, some of the people in the chat I see, you know, I, I, I think we're in the, the Wednesday night live discord chat with me and Pat. And if you guys think that any of that was not real, you're wrong because we were very, upset with each other in the Wednesday Night Live chat. And it was over one thing. And then we got so mad at each other that it continued into like pettiness throughout the rest of the night. But it was an amazing chat. It was like a two-hour chat, three-hour chat. But we got into it because I believe that Max Homa is a better golfer than Patrick Cantlay today. I actually believe, and I, and I think I have a decent argument. Now I can see where I could lose this argument in the in a courtroom but i actually believe that even their resumes in the past i think they're debatable i think they're closer than people think but i think max homa is a better golfer pat thought that was insane so he went all in on can't lay we we fought crazy like fought for real and he pissed me off so bad i legitimately had he been in person i i'm it would have gotten physical that's how pissed I was at his snarky yeah. ass comments, interrupting me and then and then deflecting to talk about something that I didn't even say and bring it up. Some that's what he does. <laughs> I, I I literally was I wanted to get physical with him. Yeah. And beat the, and, and like what a wrestling. No, I wanted to punch him from a chokehold. Oh, and anyway, I proved to be right. And of course, I put Max Homa on the card at 75 to one. I think it was the only person on any Twitter account that I saw to touting Max Homa. And I was like, if Max Homa wins the Masters, I oh. I am going to ascend and I'm going to evaporate <laughs> and leave the earth. I'm going to be done. It's over. And then no and then from there on out, no one else is ever allowed to make another golf bet. That's it. Done. No one. Agreed. And then Scotty goes to and I, he goes to four and I go, oh my God. Scotty just he did it. He's he's done. And then yeah, like you go to I went to the fridge. And I come back and I'm like, he's seven under again. What is? I thought it was. I thought the PGA Tour took over the shot link, took over the scorecard for for a quick minute. Yes, that's like sitting there watching it. It was the most mind blowing thing ever because it did. It just didn't even feel like it. Like at one point, I think what was it on Sunday? He went bogey, birdie, 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 bogey. It's like just the most outrageous scorecards of all time. 
and and well, like I no, said, Jordan Spieth holds that. But anyway, oh, yeah. well, I, I guess yes, I could agree with that. But then you know, even on Sunday, I'm telling you, I had a bet at that point on everyone but Scotty Scheffler, just 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 anyone but Scotty, and I will come out of here with some money. And you know, you you just the big the biggest one that I'm not going to lie, I, I I I'm you know hand up and let me tell you this. I listen to your spiel, okay? I listen to your spiels all the time. And last Wednesday, I listened to your spiels, okay? And and I had in my back pocket multiple, not one, but two Keegan Bradley tickets out outright, okay? Yeah, played two good. Keegan Bradley tickets outright. And I completely stayed away from, from my guy, a product of my tournament, Bryson DeChambeau, Okay. I stayed far away from him. I didn't have any tickets in my pocket at all. Thursday, Friday, finally, Saturday night, okay? I couldn't help myself any longer. I had to get in on it. And so I just threw a, just a cool 50 bucks down on Bryson DeChambeau to win 1000 bucks for him to win the damn thing. And watching, there's two guys that actually, I know that the greens are insane, but the two guys that it, it, it burnt my eyes to watch them putt, was Colin Morikawa and Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, it, I I don't think I'll stop thinking about the putts they miss for the next month because on the Colin Morikawa situation, especially on Sat, uh, was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday, right? Where I, he should have gotten first, or he should have at least tied for first at the absolute worst. On the on was it fifteen when he missed the eagle and then he missed the birdie. It was just the most, and, and how many, I'm not trying to keep talking, but it pissed me off so much because the amount of putts that Bryson DeChambeau missed that were like seven feet away. I know that the greens are really, really tough, but their putting was inexcusable and the most disgusting stuff I've ever seen in my life. That's all I got to say. Well, uh, I, have, I have takes on that. Um, before sure. I do, I do want to thank our friends at Bet the Number, Bet the Number <laughs> Golf, the best golf data and analytics site there is available on the internet. Yes. It is. Um, it led us to some great plays last week. I will argue here in just a moment that Keegan was a fantastic performer. Uh, he outperformed what he was expected to do last week. Uh, Beth, the number obviously puts out their weekly model for the for the tournament every single week. To, if if you don't want to build a model, if you're like, dude, I want to, I don't want to get nerdy. I just want just want to know who to bet on. Then you just log in. You look at Beth, the numbers model, and you fire. And one of the things about the number, two things I want to talk about, the bet the number highlighted last week, apex height being a thing, hitting it high because landing it on these hard, firm and fast greens at Augusta National were tough to do. Scotty talked about it in his post-game presser last night, uh, post-round presser, the Green Jacket press conference, he talked about it. He said, I teed it up to hit it higher and further than I, than I normally do because I knew I had width off the fairway and I needed to get as close as possible to have the highest lofted club into these greens possible. Bet the number led us to that. Bet the number put more value on short game than a lot of other models do for Augusta National. And boy, oh boy, that's where Bryson screwed the pooch. And that's what I said, Gutsy. Now listen, I will say this about Bryson. But I said this last week. T to green or, or, or off the T and approach, Bryson can do really well at Augusta. Yes, obviously. You got to be long. You got to hit your mid-long irons well. Bomb it off the T. That's what he does. But you cannot win over four rounds if your short game is that trashy. If it's that trashy, over four rounds at Augusta National Golf Club, firm and fast against the best players in the world, over four rounds, that is going to catch up to you. And it did. So, yeah. dude, my DMs last week, I, I, I went all in on, I went all out on against Bryson on the Hammer Dine show with the boys. Oh, fuck. They wanted me to change the name of Tour Junkies to Junkyard Dogs if Bryson won. I, I, trust me, I was watching. Believe me, I was. I, but, but And then after one round, everybody's freaking out. Round one was the softest round. It was the softest yes. day. The greens were the most receptive. If if Augusta National, if we play a Masters where it's wet, soft, rainy, Bryson could, could run away with it. But if, if you make him chip and putt on firm and fast greens with all that creativity that's required and all that undulation and stuff, that's where he's problems. And he played well. And not to say he didn't play well. He played better than I thought he was going to play. But I didn't – he can't win. He cannot win unless he figures that out. 
in normal to firm and fast conditions. Shout out about the number for putting us on that. Code TJ gets you $5 off uh, monthly or $50 off annual memberships as well. But, dude, I argue that Keegan was a fine play. You are not going to compare. You are not going to sit here and compare me giving you Keegan Bradley at 200 to 1 and plus 350 as a top 20 to your to me talking you off of Bryson at like well, he opened at like 70 to 1. He closed short. He, he got steamed. They're not the same thing. Keegan Bradley oh. was a bomb for sure. Yeah, for sure. He was one shot, freaking one shot from cash in the top 20 at plus 350. He finished T22. He was top 10 in approach play which is exactly what you'd expect from Keegan. He actually gained strokes putting, which was refreshing. Mike sure. Bryson, the short game was was not great. He was a great value in DFS. He was in the 6K in DFS. He was he finished T22. He was the 15th ranked scorer, DraftKings point scorer in the field, in the 6K range. Keegan was a great play. No one yeah. played him. He was low owned. Great play. I stand by it. Not wrong. That's fine. He screwed me in, in a matchup play as well on Friday. I don't want that to be forgotten. Um, well, that's, that's a one-time matchup play. I mean, I, no, I know. I'm just, I'm just pointing it out. I will say I unloaded the clip though on Sunday. Unloaded the clip on Cam Davis versus Hojgaard. Okay, and it was looking like I was going to be smooth sailing there for a second until Cam Davis decided to double bogey 17, and then and then it was only it was only had a one shot lead going into 18. It was uh, terrifying. The last thing I want to say too about it was I got. Besides having the worst weekend of all time, I had one of the luckiest uh, pushes of all time. I had Tony Finau to beat Justin Thomas. And Justin Thomas had the meltdown of a lifetime. Gosh. Where'd he go? He went like double bogey, bogey, double bogey, bogey to finish. To, to obviously miss the cut and then to tie Tony Finau in the round. Remember when he did this? Was it last year? What was it? Wasn't it last year or the year before he missed the cut at Augusta on 18? He's kind of – Yeah. Is he kind of a choke guy? Like I don't know. I don't JT – and, and I, mean, I, I will say, when we did the first look show – or the first – the betting show last week on Saturday, and I saw him at like 40 to 1, he has been playing a little better. I was kind of like, oh. You know, Maybe I'll do JT, it. JT, tough call. Maybe I'll do it. But like, as the week progressed, I, was, I talked myself out of it. But, boy, he was bad. I, he might just be – Embarrassing. We we need to see something different. Uh Lud, Ludwig Aberg. Oh. Uh and by the way, when Ludwig did his post round press conference yesterday, he kept talking about my team, my team, when my team and I decided this. Uh may or may not be true that a member of Ludwig's team has a lot to do with uh Bet the Numbers weekly model. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh Ludwig Aberg is a stud. He, he, all, all by himself, he's a stud. Interesting. Him plus Joe Scovran, caddy, with tons of experience, playing well around Augusta with Ricky Fowler all those years. Joe Scovran, I'm sure, helped him a ton. Um, Ludwig's team, the data, the analytics guys, the course people, he had a game plan. And that dude's so, so freaking good that unlike most golfers, when – you know, who have a might have a plan, like I'm gonna hit it here, I'm gonna pull this club here, I'm gonna do this. Like and, and then it doesn't happen the way that you want it to happen. So then you have to adjust. Like Ludwig just hits it where he wants. And then he just knows like this is what I do. I'm just yeah. gonna hit I'm gonna hit this ball. But I did I did think that the guy who knocked the protein bar out of his hand going from nine to ten should be arrested. I was about to bring I swear to God on everything I was waiting I was gonna bring that up to you. The most insane that was the most First of all, again, rookie mistake. I don't know what you're trying to do, high fiving people like that to begin with. Just, just don't high five the people okay? during the round. Yeah, very insane. But, but, but then again, Lud, Lud kind of, dude, Lud. You know how many hearts, how many, how many cougar hearts Ludwig won yesterday? Oh, bro, my mom. I watched it with my parents. Sure, my mom had no idea who Ludwig was the before yesterday. Boy, did he make a fan out of out of Miss Molly B. Molly B. Her. Loves him because he's, he's smiling on the course. He looks Had so a good nice. Smile. He he puts one in the water. Guess what he does? He smiles. He laughs it off. Kind of a savage. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. He deli That was deliberate, though. Whoever the whoever the hell did that, that was deliberate. That that man smacked in the slow motion. That man smoked his fuck. He just smoked his wrist. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree. That guy should be arrested. Lud Lud is. Uh, I mean, smoked. for his that that was his first major. 
first masters first major like yeah i'll i'll be honest when when saturday night i was crafting up the big three because me and all the boys i had like i said you know i had a bunch of boys coming to town for ufc 300 and the masters it worked out perfect so it was just a weekend of us chilling drinking gambling and saturday night when i was crafting up the big three i i i this is the worst part about it, BB, is I told them this. This was the, this was my last words before I you know, got the locker room, before we left the locker room to go on the field. My last words were this. A favorite don't win the Masters, and a young kid definitely ain't winning the Masters. So we're not betting. The only two we're not betting is Scotty Scheffler and Ludwig. Those are the only two. And yeah. – and, and, and you can only imagine the back, the backlash, the the chirps I was hearing Sunday coming down the stretch when the only two in contention <laughs> were the favorite and the young kid. Yeah, uh, the ice cold weekend continued, huh? Um, it was so bad. It actually got so bad that that I then panicked, right? And I said, "We have no bombs left. We're down over five hundred bucks on the Masters already. We gotta try to hit something." Okay, Ludwig uh, plus six fifty. <laughs> So then we, so when he's on fifteen, we just said we have no other choice. Let's just load up. Let's just load up and try to get some of the funds back, some of the coin back off Ludwig. And um, there, and Scotty shut that door immediately. What um, we need a good Masters man. It feels like we haven't had a good master since the since the Tiger win. Well, like, I thought though that Hideki it was wasn't on bad. how many people were in it. Yeah, but then the back nine, man, like the back nine is what you live for, right? That that is it. And then it was just over so quick. Well, we, our guy, our guy, Max Homa, because Max Homa was in the big three for Sunday. Yeah. Again, he missed some putts, sure, but that that shot, hop on twelve was so bad. Oh my god, it, that was the worst hop. It was the worst hop you could ever. That the when when the commentator described it, like, did you hear the sound it made when it hit? It just made me think, like, they can only get away with this because they're Augusta, but that is, like, the most just... They let it get... They let it get baked. So unfair. Like, that ball smoked to the green with probably a lot of spin. And he's hitting a nine iron. He probably hit a nine iron to that green. Exactly. Definitely a short... I, I, It was a short iron or a wedge. I don't know what it was. You know he hit the ball high. And you know it had yeah. spin on it. And that ball, the, just the fact that it then goes into the only thing that it could go into. By like it, this much. It had yeah, it gone this just, much to the left. It hits into the bank, rolls down. Yes. And, and then we're par. saving par at the worst. Yeah. It, it was just such a. But it still wouldn't have mattered. Like, no, I know. Like I Scotty know. wasn't coming back to the field. You had to no. go and get him. And, yeah. And, and Max Homa was not going to. Actually, well, I don't want to say that because Max Homa was the only one that was hitting elite shots. It yeah. was only him and Scott. Nobody else was hitting elite shots. Like Bryson hit a couple, but the only thing is, every time Bryson hit one, you knew he was going to miss the putt. Yeah, like, you knew he was going to miss it because he just cannot make these putts. It, it uh, was, okay, here's a quick last take on this, and we'll move on. Scotty with the baby. Um, you know, a lot of times that we talk about the nappy factor. We talk about the first kid. And what it does to a guy, a golfer, it, it typically over the long term, maybe not in the immediate, but the long term typically improves kind of the strokes gain home life. It, it gives the hashtag perspective, right? Needed, right? Which which I, I think is a great thing for like my boy Siwoo because Siwoo, hothead on the golf course, anger problems. He checks out of a golf a golf tournament very quickly when things go south. He's pissed off. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. I think a baby, now that he's had his first baby, baby, baby Theo, by the way, which is un epping believable that he named his kid Theo. Yeah. It's like my golf goat naming their son after the podcast comedy goat. Um, but I think Theo is going to help Siwoo immensely because mm-hmm. Siwoo is going to realize a bad golf shot, a bad golf round, a bad golf tournament. It's not the end of the world. Like, calm down. You're fine. Theo doesn't care what you shot today. Theo doesn't care that you, you know, you hit a bad wedge shot and you helicoptered your your 52 degree into the pond. I think that's going to help him. I think that will help him emotionally. I think that will help him mentally on the course. I've actually talked to his caddy about this. With Scotty, 
It already seems like his perspective, hashtag perspective, hashtag is perspective. so good. Will it change anything is, is the question. I think that the best opportunity for us to get a winner not named Scotty Scheffler at a major is going to come at the PGA in a few weeks because he will they will have had the baby. He's been baby zoned for you know a couple weeks. He's you know he's still not sleeping even even though Meredith's doing a lot of work right. You know he's still not going to sleep a ton. He's going to be doing a lot. Life's going to change all this stuff. He's probably going to be a little rusty. Not going to come into the PGA with quite the same tournament form as he would without the baby. So I think I think maybe I wouldn't I would not rush and bet Scotty for the PGA. That's just my thoughts. And I'm just trying to find a way to not have Scotty win everything. But from there, long term, could we argue like it might not, it just might not really change. It might not really change a whole lot for Scotty. His perspective is already that good. So I'm, I'm basically complimenting that. It seems like his he's already got the strokes gain mentals over everybody. And the baby won't hurt. Maybe it'll help even a little more. I don't know. That's that's my only take. I know you don't have a kid, so you don't know, or that you know of. Uh, yeah, no kid that I know of can guarantee. Um, can, uh, well, yeah, I could probably guarantee there's nothing out there running around. Uh, no little, no little gutsies. Uh, if there was, it, that kid would probably be unbelievable. Um, <laughs> but definitely didn't help Brooks. I'll say that much. Well, not. I mean, not yet. I, I think it will. Oh, but also, like, I kind of think Brooks kind of also had a good perspective. Like Brooks was very level on the golf. Like he's pretty level on the golf course. Pretty flat. Pretty chill. Yeah, but he, he also just he also just he just you know he just hates golf. So it's like you know it's it's a very weird. I don't uh, know about that. Anyway, well, I mean, he was just on the you know he was just on the he was just on the uh uh, uh why am I forgetting it uh why am I forgetting Buddy's little two minute shows he does three minute shows. Uh, oh, no, oh, Caleb Presley's uh, Caleb, Caleb Presley show. He Brooks was just on that. You know, he said golf's boring. Yeah, yeah. He does like to say that. He loves uh, saying it. I like his hot takes. God, that's a great show that Caleb Presley does. By the it's way. it's good, but again, like I said the other day, after watching the Brooks one, I'm just like, I can't believe this is so big for how short it is. Well, it's usually longer. It's usually longer than two minutes. Brooks is is just not going to say anything. Brooks was cracking up though. Brooks was loving it. Yeah, well, he's hilarious. Caleb Presley's hilarious. Caleb, funny guy. Did you um, did you tune into that mini golf thing and all they did or no? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, okay, dude. How about? I mean, I know me and you usually talk barstool stuff on on the golf viewers and gamblers show. But how about Portnoy, just laying the smackdown on the Scotty Scheffler bet? <laughs> he's he's the he's somehow the hottest yeah. gambler on planet Earth. It's crazy. It, it is crazy. No, no, it is crazy. Again, he had a lot of money on Scotty to fucking win, which is just. Uh, Let's uh, let's get to the favorites. Um, by the way, I have breaking news. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're gonna do the season long bet, me and Pat. Yes, as we and again, as we should. I saw the comments rolling in. I didn't want to say something. The comments were showing we need to run. We need to go again. We need to do it. Yes, we need to keep this going. There's, there's no reason not to do it. No reason to run. No reason to hide. Before we do it, okay. got gotcha. you. You're in, you're there in the SoBet Studios in Nashville. Right here. The hot one of the hottest places to go in Nashville, oh, and one of the hottest betting operations out there. Sell the people because I talk to the people about SoBet all the time. Tell the people sure. about SoBet. What are sure. they missing if they're not on there? What are they I'm not going to give you? I'm not going to give you this this annoying weird sales pitch that people are going to give you at all these conferences. This is all I'm going to tell you. Okay, if you sports gamble daily. And you and you're losing all the time, or you're just not comfortable with what you're doing. You can't really figure it out. Sobet is the greatest investment you could ever make. It's only 33 cents a day, $9.95 a month. Okay. It's cheaper than literally anything. Name something and it's cheaper than that. Okay. There's nothing you can do. Uh, these five days. guys. A meal at five guys. <laughs> a meal at five guys. That's like six months worth of soba. Yeah. Okay. So again, you go on there, you have so many options of people who have been sports gambling for years, have big followings that we have all looked at, checked out to see how they gamble. And you can just go on there, find your favorite guys on either your favorite guys on what they bet on, the sports they bet on, maybe how they bet on it, the reasonings they bet on things. You can go on there, scope it all out, find your favorite guys, find your favorite ways of tailing the bets, and it will just change how you sports gamble forever, okay? 
We, we created it to help people that don't know what they're doing and that just can't stop losing. We're trying to teach everybody that sports gambling can truly be not just a profitable long-term thing, but it doesn't have to be a life-altering um, hobby, okay? It could be a fun hobby where you win a little money or lose a little money. It depends on how you want to look at it or how you want to attack it. But we will teach you how to do it responsibly over on Soba. Use code, code TJ. Code TJ at checkout. You get your first month for a dollar. First month for a dollar. And then nine ninety five. Dude, let me tell you this. A dollar. I went to damn Mexican the other night. Okay, I got three kids. And, you know, sometimes you're like, hey, I want to go out to eat. I don't want to spend a fortune. And so normally in America, back in the golden days, you would say, let's go eat some Mexican food. Yes. I go I go to Mexican food. I mean, my do you know what case what queso costs in America? A, a a regular size queso, like a let's just say they call it a large. It ain't a large. It's a it's a medium size queso, white person queso. Yeah. Which just means just it's not real Mexican queso that you would get like if you went to Mexico or somewhere that no. was serving authentic Mexican. It's just wet cheese for white people. Do you know how much a regular large Wet cheese costs now in Mexican restaurants? I'll get $7. No. Nah, nah, bub. I paid a month of so bet for my daughter to scoop some stale chips into some wet cheese at a Mexican nine ninety five. Kid you not. Nine ninety five for wet cheese. My pollo con crema, okay, don't judge me, was like $15. It is four, it's three and a half chicken tenderloins some rice, and more of that wet cheese. That's all it is. Yeah, I don't even really know what you just ordered. It's called a what? Pollo con crema. Just, just chicken with wet cheese and rice. Okay. It, 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 it okay. is my family of five, Gutsy, after a 20% tip, because I'm not a douche, after a 20% tip, my meal at the Mexican restaurant for five people on a Thursday night where we just wanted to go out to eat and eat something cheap. I had one beer. Was it the big one? Yes, I had one beer. The That's wife fine. had one margarita. Wasn't the top shelf, just regular margarita. I think we had a couple sweet teas. $90. 90 You talk about the best. Let me tell you, you're down there in Nashville. You're a single man. You yeah. live, you hanging out with a bunch of other single men in Nashville. Pretty much. The best contraception. I could I could give you right now is showing you the receipts from shit I have to pay for with kids in America in 2024. It's, I mean, I, yeah, it's unbelievable, and that's and that's yeah. a rant I wasn't planning on making today, but I just want to say it. It's unreal. No, I listen, and I get that kids are expensive. I'm sure of it. I, I've Love had, it. Love I've it. had multiple. Uh, I've had multiple girlfriends. Uh, I haven't had a wife, but I've had a girl that you know we lived together. I had a house together. So you know, I know how expensive girls are. I can tell you that. Yeah, uh, and I can't imagine having a then. You know, smaller girl slash smaller boy, and yeah. try to figure out what the hell to do there because that would be unbelievable. I will just tell you this, DB. I just complained to Bryce a week ago after I went to our little local Mexican joint that's just a couple blocks away. I said, let me you know, let me go over here and support these guys. Let me get a little food. It, my bill was like twenty six dollars, and I got yeah. three tacos, a, a plate of rice, and a coke, and, it, and that's it. And it was like twenty six dollars. <laughs> Yeah. I, I literally couldn't believe it. And I don't ever complain about prices of stuff, I swear. But I literally came home and I'm like, boys, th this cost me. I got three tacos. The chips and salsa are free. How, how much are the tacos? Like seven bucks a taco? So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you there. If, if you are watching on YouTube and you agree that the price of Mexican restaurant cheese is out of control, hit the like button, subscribe comment um if you want I, I i'm already seeing people in the comments this is really you know jazzing people up this is this I is a should. real this is a real issue we gotta we gotta use our voices here people they are trying to raise the prices on our mexican food we, we can't allow it i mean i do you know what i do uh you know what i do db this is a little secret for you i don't know yeah, you, you actually know you do this because of what you just said you eat right when i when i get my little plate of rice i get i, I say let me get like a little thing of queso just a little queso. I don't need the big thing queso. So give me a little queso. Which, by the way, that does cost like five bucks. Just a little, <laughs> little thing of queso. And and I take that queso, though, and, and I pour that right on the rice. And, and it's, yeah, it's so out good. of this world. Have you ever have you ever walked by one? We have one that we go to that's a hot one, right? And we go there, and they have, the, they have us part of the kitchen. 
that I call the honey hole part of the kitchen. And it's where it's where all the it's where all the people's money goes. And you have to walk by it to go to the bathroom. And in the in the honey hole corner is this pot. It's like a witch's pot, you know, it's this big. And it's got all the gold in it with the ladle. That's where they get the wet cheese. That's where they scoop it. And when you're walking by to go to the bathroom, every time, every fucking time I walk by there, we go there three times a month. Used to. Used to. Now like maybe twice a month. But every time I go past that damn thing, I just want to knock it over. It just pisses me. I just look at it on my way to go pee all my beer out because I'm 40 and it hits me real quick. I rent that right. shit. I don't, I don't drink beer. I rent it. And so I'm walking by and I see that little pot of gold, you know, that little yeah. where the gold at. He won the, the guy with the leprechaun went over to gold at. It is in the pot of wet cheese in Mexican restaurants across America. There, That okay. pot is worth $4,000 based on what they charge. And that ladle. Scoops out nine dollars every time it dips in there is nine dollars. Mm-hmm. They make they make millions off of queso. Millions. It's it's it's, it's similar to You're literally melting cheese yeah. in a pot. That's it. Like our Mexican restaurants here in Augusta, they don't even have anything in it. There's like not you know I was like you go to like authentic Mexican like it might have a uh, it might have a bean in it maybe a yeah, little you might have some chili maybe a jalapeno it. maybe it's something. No, it's just no you you people are just gonna get just the cheese just and you're gonna cheese. like it. Just, that just 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 cheese and that's it. Yeah, just straight cheese. No, it's it's a monopoly. That's what this is. So it's it's an absolute monopoly and a scam. It's just like parking. Parking is insane. See, that's why I can't live in a real place like you do. That's why I have to live where I live because, like, when you come when you come visit me, when you have to buy my dinner for losing that bet last week, yeah, and you come visit me, you see we get to park where we want to party. We don't have to pay for shit. That's why I, I mean, live here. Well, again, I can't I, imagine I having to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Before I lived in the city, you know, town of 4,200. So. Oh, yeah, you know. You know. I, yeah. Oh, I know. Trust me. Then we moved to Chicago. Then. <laughs> and I realized that if you want to make, if you want to become a millionaire, just get a loan and go buy a parking lot near Wrigley Field and you yeah. will become a millionaire. There is a bar that quite literally never has people in it unless there is a Cubs game going on, but they make millions of dollars every year because of their parking lot. <laughs> because they charge fifty dollars per car for parking every single game, and guess what? If it's a concert, you're paying a hundred dollars for parking. If it's a playoff game, you're gonna pay two hundred dollars to park there. And these guys are just do the Cubs crazy. have playoff games, huh? Do the Cubs have playoff games? I don't know. I haven't watched them. Uh, I remember when Andre no. Dawson was there, but other than you don't that, have to go that far in the rear view to go back to 2016 uh, oh, with yeah, the Chicago yeah, yeah. Cubs again, down three to one. You know, you thought that little weirdo with his you know, Raji Davis hits one home run in 12 months, and it's in the biggest game of my life for them to take the lead. But guess what? Then the rain hit. Then Jason Hayward got the boys fired up. Uh, okay. Don't care. And we came on one. Don't care. I'm laughing because Jeanette Kramer is in the chat, and she says that they will say no cheese for you because they're listening. You think all the, the – she thinks the, the folks uh, in – that 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 you know, big Mexican restaurant like Big Tech, big Mexican in America is listening to this show. I don't I don't think actually I'm surprised anybody's listening to this show at this point. This has gone completely off the rails. Yeah, well, this is what happens. This is what happens with me and you. Yeah. Um, we were getting to the season long bet. That's what we were doing originally. So I, I did feel I, I I do appreciate you for inspiring me, the people in the chat for inspiring me. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm so I texted chat uh, texted chat texted Pat and said hey. When I was out that week, I sent a pick in. I think I want to do this. What's your pick? He said, I went, I said, I got to go first, which I think is right, producer Tony. So, my official pick that I am fading at Harbor Town Golf Links. Um, and it's a guy that I have saved so much money. Honestly, had I, in the last few years, had I bet this guy, even halfway to the extent that the average dumb golf better bets this person, uh-huh. I would have, I would have, I would have no money to feed my daughter nine ninety five Mexican white cheese. I, I would have no money, but she has been able to have said Mexican cheese, said wet cheese. cheese, because I have avoided this man for so long, and I've saved my unit. I've not spent units on it, and I'm going to continue to do it this week. As he plays Harbor Town, it might even be for the first time. I don't even know if he's ever played it, but he ain't played it in a long time. He skipped it last year, uh, and he sucks at golf right now. And his name is Rory 
McElroy. That's right. I'm fading the guy at 11 to 1. That's who I'm fading. Rory McElroy. Book it. Pat has chosen to run it back with his guy. Um and I think this is a I think this is a dangerous move. See, this is what this is what I, I'm reverse psychologying this thing. Like this okay. is what I would have done. But see, now Pat's doing what I would have done, which means this is going to be a bad bet for him. He missed the cut at Augusta, and you think this is a trap. Oh, oh he or you think you know he's he sucks now or whatever it is, and you're wrong. He plays here at Harbor Town all the time. Never really plays great, but this is different. He's betting Wyndham Clark. He's fading, fading Wyndham Clark, excuse me. So his fate is Wyndham Clark. My fate is Rory. He's running it back with Wyndham. I'm going to continue to be right on how bad Rory is. What do you think? I, I, um, I'm a Rory guy. I, I love Rory. Uh, I, I didn't, I mean, I didn't have luckily, him written luckily down. You don't, have a, you don't have a daughter that loves wet cheese. That is a, that or is a fair in, point. You would be in trouble. Oh, I'd be in grave danger. Yeah. I'd buy all the white cheese in the world, all the wet cheese you want. I mean, I do, I do. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not denying. I just didn't sound like you do, so that's why I was saying I would. No, I'm not. I just I'm not thrilled about the markup on it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, sure, and I agree with that. Not no argument from over here. Um, but I love Roy McIlroy, and uh, it just seems like a ballsy bet from you. It almost feels like you're panicking in a little bit here with that play. I may be. I could be. Yeah, that's could what be it feels now. like from from my side, just from an outside perspective looking in. It feels like you're panicking. You're, you're trying to make a hero call right now. That's what some say. They call it in poker. You're trying to make a hero call. You think the guy's bluffing? He's not bluffing, all right? Don't make the call. And that's what it feels like you're doing um, because it does feel like Roy McIlroy will definitely be making a cut this weekend. He played – well, yeah, there is no cut. Guess oh. Me. Oh, well, okay. Well, then there, I guess I don't, now I hate it even more. Well, I mean, what that means Wyndham's going to be here too, huh? You know what I almost did? Can I what? tell you this? I almost went with Scotty. Not because what if that'd be a strategical play? What if you know? I mean, yeah. everybody's worried about Scotty and the baby, and you know, what if what if uh, what, what if what if the baby comes, um, and then he withdraws? I I almost went that route, but I also think, like, I remember this tournament last year when Rom won. Everybody was like, "Ain't no chance John Rom is going to really give it his best effort here," right? And he didn't. I think at one point on Sunday, he was literally in the broadcast booth Sunday at the Heritage. Probably. Like, giving his thoughts. I, I don't think that's going to happen with Scotty if he tees it up. I mean, A, that was John Rahm's first Masters. I think there's a difference when you win your first one and you win your second one, you know. But I do think this interesting, you know, Scotty, by the way, all, we didn't talk about this. What a bro move that Scotty says in the press conference for the sound bites, right? I can't wait to go home and get to get to Meredith. I just want to get out of here and get to Meredith. And then what emerges on the internet about an hour ago, but pictures of Scotty at a bar with, a some, bros, bar. with some bros. I mean, yep. I love it. I yes. love it. But, I mean, hell, hell yeah, Scotty. He did his thing. I mean, Scotty's literally going to – my guess is when tea times come out tomorrow, he'll be late as, late, as as late as they can push him. And he might fly in on damn Thursday. Yeah. And just be like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. And his plane lands an hour before he, you know, maybe runs a Theragun over himself or something, and then he just hops out there and he's ready to roll. Excuse but you. I almost went with Scotty for that reason. Who knows? But I do think Scotty is so freakishly talented, obviously, that, like, he could just do all that and then still boat race everybody. Yeah, he was – so like I said, some of the shots that he just had into the green specifically during the Masters, it just didn't even feel possible that right. anyone could even do that. So it, it does feel like that he's so dialed in that no matter where he plays, no matter the conditions, no matter anything, he's just going to be able to go out there and just play his game and it's going to work out. The, the dude is just insane. So, you know, I, I think a lot of these guys hate that the PJ Tour does this the week after the Masters, okay? Harbor Town is a wonderful place. A family vacations there every summer. I'll be going there this summer. Can't wait. It's a lovely place. But the guys that loved coming to Harbor Town used to love coming to Harbor Town because they could choose to come to Harbor Town. They could choose to make it this family thing. If they wanted to do it the week after the Masters, they could. If they were drained and they didn't want to because a major championship week is just different, then they wouldn't. Then when they made it a signature event last year, 
And it felt like everybody had to be there. This is one of the ones that, you know, everybody has to be at, right? They do it again this year. I think there's something to the guys who never really prioritized coming here for whatever reason, probably because they didn't want to play the week after Augusta National. Yeah. I would imagine Rory's in that boat because before 2020, he, play, he last played this in 2020, COVID year, okay, when, when it was all moved around. It was in June. That's why he played it. He had not played there since 2009. He skipped it last year, knowing it was a designated event after he missed the cut at Augusta. Skipped it. No. Didn't even play four days at Augusta last year. <laughs> and skipped it. And just said, nah, Jay, I'm out. I'm good. So I don't think, I, I think there's a lot of guys who just don't really want to be here. And that doesn't mean, again, that they won't peg it up and they won't try their best. But I think it's something. You know, Wendell Clark misses the cut. He's on quite the run. Uh, probably disappointed in his first loop at Augusta, but it is what it is. Miss the cut, get some rest, go to Hilton Head, enjoy yourself, and go out and take down another signature event. I, I, I think, I think Rory's the better fade here out of Wyndham than Rory. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it'll be crazy though if uh, Scheffler on you know Friday afternoon has to withdraw and leave. You'll, yeah, you'll, no, I'll be kicking myself for that one. Yeah, you'll be mad. Um, all right, let's talk about a few picks. We'll get out of here. I mean, this show's gone on forever. We've not even really made an actual pick, but I uh, no, I, but again, I warned, everybody. I warned everybody. Yeah, that's sometimes just what happens. We'll talk about queso dip for 20 minutes sometimes. You never know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Ludwig win, wins this thing. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's, that's what you got? Yeah, I mean, like, be, because the kid is, he's a kid. He's got yeah. stamina for days, vitality. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hashtag yeah. vitality for uh -huh. old Lud. He's uh, he's twelve to one. He's a ball striking G. Uh, Harbor Town actually requires more mid irons than people think about because they they see the scorecard yardage and they think it's a shorter you know shorter approach plays and stuff. Which there are some. It's not going to be as daunting as Augusta National, obviously. But there's a lot of mid irons here. He's going to mm -hmm. hit those quite nicely. Um, if you can drive it long and straight, you have a big advantage on, on any Pete Dye course, which he does. And I just think he's just one of the, he's a young kid that doesn't have like Harbor town is a family thing. And like, he's just going to be there with his chick and his chef and his team. And he's got a really bright strategy mind that helps him out who knows how to pick apart Harbor town. And they're just sure. going to go on this hole. You're hitting driver on this hole. You're not, you're going to attack the pin when it's here. You're going to make sure you don't, you, you know, make sure you miss here. Bing, bang, bong, put on the plaid jacket, have the cannons go off on Sunday evening, you know, see you at the PGA. I, I just kind of think that's happening. I, I, guess, I guess that could happen. Um, was it, I, I haven't said, I didn't even really have him picked here in my, in my notes right here of picks. Who do you have I, in your picks? Huh. You want, you want, you want, I, I'm I'm yeah. hoping because I got two more guys in this range and I don't want both. I want one and I want to see if you have I want to see if you have one or both. So well, I think one that we just would be dumb not to talk about. And again, I know it's an elevated event now. I know the field is a little bit, but we have to talk about Patrick Cantlay, right? I mean, obviously he's got oh. the record. He's got the record here. He's got a really good track record here. People love Cantlay. He got steamed this morning. I will say that a lot of people hammering in this morning. Okay, it doesn't surprise me. I mean. He's Five top tens, four top fives in six yeah. events played here. That is absolutely insane. Yeah. Feel this stronger now. It is super weird, though. This is one because when you say it got steamed, what was it at? Because I did see it was at 1400. So did it get steamed from something? I think he was, uh, let me see. Cantlay opened up at 20. Mm, okay. Well, then that makes sense. Because even now, though, still, the line doesn't really make that much sense. I feel like some of the guys that, our favorites that above him are really close to the line. It just feels like Patrick Cantlay's track record here is so good that even with it being an elevated event and a stronger field than past years, I mean, he still should have yeah. a ton of confidence coming into this tournament. It's just so. his form. His form is is nowhere near what it has been in years past, mm -hmm. but he, he did. I'm looking at his performance at Augusta. I mean, he hit it well at Augusta. He gained strokes off the tee a little bit. It was basically neutral. But, I mean, the approach play was – kind of vintage a little bit vintage Patrick Cantley like he his approach play was very strong which has been where he's been kind of poor um 
in in recent weeks. So if if that is if the approach play is now kind of back and you know he's back to hitting it like Patrick Cantlay. I mean, he gained almost five shots on approach at Augusta. If it's back, then yeah, I'm I'm there. But yeah. he's not one of the ones I have written down. Okay, all right. Um, I'll, okay. I'll say I'll I'll say one of my other two, and then you'll say your second one. Okay, we'll see we'll okay. see kind of where we're at here after this one. Um, I'm just in between on which one I want to go with first, but I think I want to I want to say this. I don't want you to beat me to it. Okay, because I have a feeling you might be on this guy as well. He he is one of your guys. He's one of your guys. He's also been struggling. Okay. Hasn't had the greatest summer ever. That is Mr. Brian Harmon, a product of the JDC, a winner of the John Deere Classic, the fifth major. Um, he's played here 14 times. It's kind because isn't this kind of like the area he's originally from? Obviously, uh, I know he went to Georgia. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if Harmon's from I'm not sure exactly but yeah I mean he he's very quite familiar with southeastern Bermuda that's what I'm saying so he's from the area so that also kind of helps it might again I'm not in his brain but it might be almost like a little home course feel guy might be getting a little bit confidence going back but three top 10 finishes obviously he finished t7 last year I think the number on him is so high because of how inconsistent and bad he has been as of late but this course I mean I don't know if you would agree with me here that it kind of just sets up for the way that he's going to want to play this. What do you think? It does. Um, first of all, you've, you've already, you're already, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of expected this. Um, Go ahead. Young people, you, you guys have a hard time like following directions and stuff. So I get it. Uh, your ADD kicks in. You're, you're outside the range. Okay. We're talking favorites. We're talking. See, that's why I didn't want to say him. I do talking have a favorite. 30. I want to say, I didn't want. Talking 30, 30 to one, kind of or less here, gutsy. It's right there on the screen. If you need to look at it, see the screen. Oh, that's on me. This. First but, time um, here. First time here. Rookie mistake. I get it, and and you're allowed to ha you're allowed to have that. Um, rookie mistake. You're allowed to have that. I knew what I was getting when I asked you. I, I get. It. I got it. I don't want to. I don't want to go again. But I will say, I no. don't. I, I I do think that Brian Harmon is a great fit for this place. But something he's not. I don't know. He doesn't seem like he's really dialed right now. He kind of feels rusty to me. He yeah, still feels like he's just kind of rusty. I don't know why you'd show it to Augusta National like that, but and that's probably why you're getting the number you're getting on him. But I don't. I'm not in. Um, I, I want to talk through my two favorites that I have up here, other than Ludwig, and one of them is Morikawa at twenty at twenty to one. When I think about you know, Pete Dye, Iron. Play. I've I've played this golf course a couple a, a couple times, and I've said this. This is well documented. Um, when I whenever I talk about it, I hate playing this golf course. I hate it. Um, not that it's a bad golf course, but it is a bad golf course for me because I don't hit clubs very straight. And you don't you don't have to be you don't have to be long here, uh, but you do have to be straight. And Morikawa yeah. is looked quite straight again at Augusta National this past week. So uh, I I, I like the 20 to 1 number. He's got a T7 here back in 2021. Uh, finished 31st here last year. Obviously, the putter's a problem for him. He can't figure out Bermuda greens. But, you know, if you, if you can hit these greens, they're pretty small. You can make a lot of them. Uh, I think 20 is interesting. And then the other one that I, I want to de debate on here and talk to is actually uh, is actually adult braces. It's the defending champ. It's the defending Matthew, champ. Matthew Fitzpatrick. Only because... Like Fitzy, I think Fitzy's a little longer than Cowley. He's like twenty-two to one, so you're getting a little better value. I mean, gun to my head, I think I, I think I'd rather have more Cowley. But I know this about Fitzy. We we saw it. They they shoved it down our throats last year at this tournament. Fitzy loves Hill Harbor Town. I mean, just, loves it. Just loves it. Caitlin Clark, love like loves Harbor Town. Caitlin Clark Fitzy, getting drafted tonight in his heart, like deep in his heart and soul. Loves it here. We talked about. I remember us talking about this last year, DB. Yeah, me and you. So, uh, twenty-two. Like, it's not like he played bad. I know he let you down, but it's not like he played bad at Augusta. No. Um, I'm intrigued by that. What do you think? I I love it, but for the exact same reasons. And again, I like. I actually tried looking back for our clip from last year because I remember us mm. talking about how much we love adult braces here. How much he just. He just, he just, it's just one of them courses that you go to. And we all have that course. All of us amateurs have that course that when you go there, you just play 
well there. I don't know what it is. You don't even know what it is. You just play well there. And this is just one of the courses for Matt Fitzpatrick. And he didn't play that bad in the Masters. And, and by the way, just so you know, I, I let him know on Saturday night, Sunday morning, hey, tone it down. The, our team's dead anyways. Even if you do, even if you do cash, we lose to the plus 150. So, yeah. you know, tone it down and wait for next week. That's what he did. So I actually agree with you. I think that this is a, a just a great event for him. He already loves it. Now, obviously, with it being an even bigger event than it's ever been, you know, in previous years past, obviously, before they changed everything over last year because of, you know, the whole live situation. Um, but uh, I love Matthew Fitzpatrick here as well. He's, uh, he's one of the other guys I had written down besides one guy that I thought you were going to say. One okay. favorite. Okay. I mean. I'm stunned that you didn't say Xander. Oh. What? I, I mean, I listen, I I did the Xander thing for a week. It wasn't terrible. I mean, I Xander, how did it go with Xander? It was my really my first date with Xander at the Masters. And yeah, mine too. I had two tickets in my pocket as well. I feel like it wasn't like it wasn't terrible because I mean it's not like he like had the lead and choked it away. It's not like he played so bad that he was out of it early. It's like he, he like he he like let us go up his shirt, you know. Yeah. But then he, right when we started yeah, to feel a little I'm something, jokes. You know, right right when he, we started feel something, that he just kind of like said no, never mind. Too soon. Yeah, he said I'm nervous. Yeah, but and I was like I'm nervous too. It's my first time with you, mm -hmm. and then, but this still didn't work out. Um, Agreed. So I. I don't know. I, listen, listen, DB. Let what's me ask his you. number. Like, I don't, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't think 10 to one. No, God, no. I could get Ludwig at 10 to one or 12 to one or whatever. No, listen to me. Listen to me, DB. Listen Absolutely me. not. DB, we're getting a, I mean, I would argue here. And actually, someone just said it in the comments, Kramer. He's very consistent. He's actually, I know, one of the most consistent guys. And this, this is, this Agreed. is my question to you. This is my question to you. Okay. When a guy like, there's a difference, right? Colin Morikawa, right? He he play, he had a stressful Masters, right? He had a chance to win it. He was always in contention. Somebody like Xander, Xander was never in contention to win, right? So would you would you say that somebody like Xander, right? The round that he played in the Masters, that's a very less stressful round compared to someone like Morikawa. Do you think that has any effect on the next tournament? Um, I think it could. Uh huh. I think it could. I, I, I think so too. But there's, the, yeah. I think so too. And guess who had a very stress free Masters? Xander. Xander. But Xander. Xander can't can, close the freaking door, I, man. I agree with that. But what if Ludwig what? is 12 to 1? Ludwig is longer than Xander. But that, that is Ludwig's the young and dumb. He's going to put one in the water just like he did on, what was it, 16? 15. 11. 11. Yeah. Just like he did on 11. He he could easily do that again. It's Xander. He's not doing that. Xander's going to be consistent. Boom. Fairway. Green. Two putt. Fairway. Green. Birdie. Every now and again. Right? You're going to have to get some birdies out here. So it'll be more birdies than not. But if there's a guy that I'm willing to trust as my favorite favorite, how could I not pick the guy that might actually be the outright favorite before the tournament even tees off? Okay. If... This is, gone. this is gone. This is gone. Scotty's on wife goes into labor. This is true. If Scotty's wife goes into labor, he might he he could become the favorite. Um, he will become the favorite. What am there, I doing? Here? There is more breaking news. Oh, and I'm going to delay that for a second. We need to talk about it. Um, I want to get through some more bets. We're going to fire this off quickly. The whole show is going to change gears here, Gutsy. Um, before I do that, okay. We want to thank our friends at Swanee's for hooking us up, for outfitting us. By the way, Swanee's is sending Pat a box of gear. And boy, you guys are not going to believe the stuff that I've had Swanee's add to the package for our boy Pat. And I can't wait to see him in it. They got joggers. They got some fun prints over there at Swanee's. Code TJ25 gets you 25% off your entire order. Anything on the site, men's, juniors, women's, the whole fam damnly can get outfitted with Swanee's gear and it's beautiful stuff. All right here based in the U.S., ships anywhere to U.S. and Canada, great people, environmentally conscious products. We've been rocking Swanee since the jump of 2024, pumped about it, known those guys since 2015, 
Great guys that started Swannies. Go check them out. Swannies.co. Link in the description. TJ25 for 25% off. Let's rattle off some bets, and then let's talk about what just what just broke on the internet. Okay. Uh, Mid range. You talked about Brian. I'm just going to throw out some names that I like. I, I might go back to. I'm going to. There's some names in here I'm going back to because they they I had them on the card, but I like I like going back. Uh, okay. The gala at 40 to one on FanDuel. I love uh, creativity is the theme at this golf course, working it right to left, left to right, you know, understanding what Pete Dye is asking you to do, I think is important. Chipping, putting, all that's important. I think here, the gala just feels like that, that type of player. So it's one reason why I thought he would do well at Augusta. He didn't. It's the second time around. He still made the cut. He finished 40 something. I don't care. Um, but I like him. I'm going back to the well with Shane Lowry documented how good my boy hit it at Augusta. Big difference here. These greens are flat. They have very little undulation. They're very small. Mm -hmm. If he hits these greens with the approach play that he had at Augusta, he's not going to be having all the three putts. He's not going to lose seven and a half strokes putting. Hard to do. Um, so I like Shane Lowry a lot at 55 to 1. In a ball striking, you know, ball striking premium situation where again, small greens, kind of like Lowry. I think Connors is live at 50 to 1 again. My boy, I love this mid-range. JT Poston at 70 and Chris Kirk at 75. I like a good bit too. Southern oh, boys. <laughs> Southern boys. Love them some Bermuda. I, I like that. Who who else you kind of got in this range or any quick thoughts on those guys? I mean, and, and I will say there's one guy that I have in mind. And I think, I swear to God, that we talked about this last year too, right? Like you said, it's a family spot, right? It's it's a great spot for the family. Yes, yeah. It's a great spot for a man, for a father, like Tony Finau, to really just come oh, out dear. and make something happen. You yeah. got the whole listen, and I, I don't know if you saw the TikToks that were being made from the Finau family. I don't, I don't watch. I don't oh, watch. they had some TikToks they were Not making out, feet. huh? Not in my feed. Can we talk about the absolute unit of a couple of boys that Tony? Fe I mean, those kids. I wasn't going to bring it up. That, the, the, his kid is 12. The 12 year old could play like Division three co college football line. Get him on the varsity team yesterday. Okay. He's playing left guard. Yeah. We're, we're running halfback power, uh, A gap, C gap, B gap. What's the gap? And Bryce, what's that gap? Left side. <laughs> Strong side. I don't know. I was clear, clearly we're, not a lineman. We're running halfback power C gap so many times behind that kid. Yeah, no, Tony Finau has got. I, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm done betting Finau right now. I don't want Finau. You know, I, I actually agree because I had Finau in a couple of matchup bets. Uh, he crumbled in them. Obviously, I got lucky in the JT one. I did have a Finau ticket round leader round two. <laughs> Honestly, he might be. You know, his family co goes with him every week. This could be the problem. Like Finau has made so much money over his career on and off the course, on and off the golf course, that now he can just afford. I mean, can you 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 talk about feeding my family of five huh. at a Mexican restaurant yeah. and the size of my kids? The, he's got what seven in there, and the and the size of his crew. Y you have to be loaded to travel America and do what they're doing. He's made so much money; he doesn't even care about that. He's not even thinking about that. And maybe the family's actually the problem. Maybe he needs to be on the road dialed laser focused yeah. because i'm not seeing it so i'm out on female to win I, I don't think i could do it who else yeah, I, I mean listen i agree with you this just seems like the perfect event for him and his family him yeah. and his little family. to have a lot of fun and not win yes um probably yeah i would say the odds are definitely higher on that yeah anybody um, else but uh besides that though and again i forget what uh what is your boy at? i'm surprised you didn't bring up your boy today too I know you already brought him up kind of just a little low key here. I'm surprised you don't even like Siwoo Kim just a little bit. I kind of do, but that number, the number's short. 25? It was 35 this morning. Oh. Actually, I think it was 40. What is it? Um, so I think I think people have kind of missed it. Uh yes, yeah, Siwoo opened at 40. He's third. I see him at, I see him at 33 right now somewhere else, though. He okay. opened at 40. But he okay. is steaming. He's I'm steaming. looking around. Yeah, I'll try to see if I can. I, can I don't hate him. I actually, I think he could. I, I do think he's going to have. I bet he could have a good week. I just, I don't love the value on that at the moment. Yeah, that that was actually my favorite one. That was the one that I thought you were definitely going to bring up. And yeah. then I definitely thought you were going to bring up Xander for the favorites. Yeah. Still stunned you didn't bring up Xander. 
I'm not a Xander guy. I just was last week. We had a on, we had a one night stand. I was on Xander too, and I'm ready to get right back after it. Date number two. I, I already picked out the spot. Seven o'clock candlelight. I got I got two more bombs. Hundred to one Lucas Glover on Fanduel. Hundred twenty five to one Adam okay. Shank. So now so now we're giving out bombs. Yeah, we're giving out. We've moved the bombs. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I just said we're, we're, on bomb. we're kind of we, I got to move quick so we can get to this news. Oh sure sure. Uh, Lucas Glover, Adam Shank, 100 to 1, 125 to 1. I mean, it speaks for itself. Ball strikers, plenty. Lucas Glover loves him, some Hilton head. Uh, my boy Shank, really impressed with how they played the last couple weeks. My caddy, Brett Swedberg, yeah. good, good friend. They had a great week at Augusta for the first time. I can't believe they did that well. Got himself into the Masters next year. Uh, hitting it great, feeling good. Vibes are high. Strokes gain home life is good. I just, I could see him, I could see him making some noise at 125 to 1. That's got to feel so good to know that you have an invite to go back to the Masters the next yeah. year. Yeah. It's got to be like a, a relief off the chest. Yeah, like no matter what he does, he could suck between here and then. Literally no matter what happens. Yeah. You got any other bomb outrights? And then let's get to some top 20s. I mean, we'll just get into them real quick. I mean, there's honestly not a lot of bombs, even when I was looking at it earlier, yeah. that even look like they remotely would have it, like have a chance this week. Yeah. It's just so crazy seeing like someone like, you know, you're, you're like looking down and you just see Gary Woodland. And you're just like, man, this guy absolutely stinks. And like, he absolutely stinks right now. Yeah. Like, watching him in the Masters was almost as bad as watching Tiger. Well, I mean, he is recovering from brain surgery. Yeah, I know. It's just like yeah. sad to see. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it it's is. Like, damn. I mean, you know, and that's the thing. You could get suckered into looking at past champs at, at the Heritage and see a lot of big numbers and mm -hmm. odd names, but that's when it was not a signature event. So, yeah, you kind of get down here and you're like, oh, I could kind of see that guy winning a tournament, but I don't know if it's going to be the one with, you know, Scotty and Xander and Cantlay and Fitzy and Kawa and Ludwig and, you know. Yeah, you got Jake Knapp. Yeah, this is not a great course for Jake Knapp. I can mm -hmm. tell you that right now. No, honestly, I, I, I the, the bombs that just, they're just really not that good here. I mean, we could obviously yeah. always lock in your guy, our guy, my favorite guy, Kevin Kisner. And no, that would be a bad decision. <laughs> Gutsy. Yeah. <laughs> he's plus like a hundred thousand. Well, yeah. yeah. Have you seen what he's done lately? No, I know. I'm just, we talked about this a couple months ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He, the man doesn't dip anymore. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, not, well, at least he wasn't at that point. He may have now gone back because you kind of go one, you get, you know, you, the pendulum starts to swing over here, and you kind of go, okay, I now I'm gonna start dipping again. Yeah, I would hope so. Get, get um, back to the roots. Let's talk top twenties, locks and bombs, teams. two locks. You you kind of you kind of uh, teed me up on this one because I was gonna say one of my locks. I don't love the outright number, but at, at plus money for a top twenty, I'll take C Wu at plus there one. It is. <laughs> I'll take Siwoo at plus 110. And then, um, well, you you give me your lock. Let me make a decision. Real quick. You want my lock? I want your lock. It's it's a man that let me down. Crushed my soul. Didn't get me to where we needed to be just last week. My next I know it's a small good. number. I know it's a small number. It's nothing mm -hmm. crazy. That's but I do really, really like, and again, Russell Henley. Russell Henley, Russell okay. Henley, Russell Henley. What's the Henley. number? Right now, I mean, on one, I'm seeing it, I think, plus 115. Okay. Again, it's, not, it's not a big number. This I mean, see, lose 110. It's a plus money bet. If yeah. we're saying it's plus money and it's a lot. Plus money bet. It's a plus money bet. Welcome to golf betting. Plus 115. Listen, I'm and 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 <laughs> thanks to our friends over at Bet the Number. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, be, be ready, DB. I'm going to start. Start. I think I'm gonna start getting in the thick of it more here. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're gonna we're Let's gonna change. We're gonna turn some focus here. Oh, okay. Because okay. I, I, you know, obviously big baseball guy, big NHL yeah. guy, big football, big football guy. guy. I love betting those sports. Seriously, I think it's, it's about time that we. Well, you, you can't run any colder than you just did this weekend. So no, you should impossible. start now. Impossible. Yeah. Um, all right, so you're going, you're going Henley. I'm going Siwu, and then I'm going back to you. You talk about a guy that hurts you and Russell Henley. I'm going back to a guy that hurt me and Shane Lowry, plus one fifty. Uh, I'm still buying, dude. Shane Lowry, three top ten finishes in his last five attempts here at Harbor Town. Comes mm -hmm. to Harbor Town every year. Loves him some Harbor Town. Still dialed with the irons. Going to be good around the greens. 
just needs a few putts to drop. But he's actually, you know, outside of last year, he hasn't been terrible putting at Harbor Town. He's actually had some peak weeks putting at Harbor Town. So I'm going Shane Lowry. Two, he's got two thirds and a ninth in his last five attempts here. Plus 150, top 20, Shane Lowry. Plus 150, not so bad. I'd put that almost as good as what my next pick is going to be. Okay. Which is, of course, I've already talked about him. Another man who's peaked, basically, not quite peaked, product of the JDC, Brian Harmon, to go get himself a top 20 Yikes. at a course that he loves. Yikes. A course that he is going to cruise into the top 20 with. <clears throat> I'm telling you, he sets up perfect for the course, especially for what he's going to have to do off T. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know. It's, it's all perfect. It's, it's not bad. What What's the number on him? Plus 140. Plus 140. Okay. Uh, all right. One bomb a piece. Got to be two to one or longer. This is mm -hmm. tough. It is tough. But I think I already got I think, uh, I think I know what I have to do, though. Uh, what, all right. You go first. Go. <laughs> Shocker. Um, I'll leave this off here, though. And I'm, I'm letting you get the pick of the litter here. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, no, no. That's fine. It, it's... It's a pick that I feel like I'm getting sucked in on. Hmm. I have a feeling I know who you're going to pick. Um, hmm. but I I'm going to have I'm going to have to go with Brendan Todd. Okay? I'm locking him. Look, I was kind of looking at Todd. I'm looking at Brendan Todd here. I'm locking him in. I think that again, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough with with the elevated event. The field is a lot tougher. The field's a lot stronger. Um the no cut obviously helps everything out, um, but this could be this could be a spot where you could see he could find some success in and just kind of squeeze into that top twenty. So I like Brendan Todd at uh, two to one. I looked at Todd. Uh, I'm going to go two to one as well, but I'm going to stick with the hot hand that that me and Pat been touting. He was on my outright card in Houston. He finished a runner up. He was uh, a top twenty bet for us at the Masters. Finished T twenty. Uh huh. Taylor Moore, two to one. <laughs> I'm going T more. Played here for the first time last year. Finished 11th. Really playing nicely right now. Um, this is going to handcuff him a little bit off the tee, but I think you can figure it out. Great short game. A good, you know, a kind of a peak iron player here at times. And he's a. I think he's kind of a low key dog. I don't think he's going to be too intimidated by this uh, by this field. So we'll see. There you go. Okay, gutsy. There's been some something circulating here in the golf world and we'll 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 do this we'll take on this kind of quickly because we... and and you know it's the rumor mill yeah but i'm seeing a couple of things i'm going to read you something here from cityam.com which is uh some sort of online looks like a legit publication i don't know it says i'm going to read this while the eyes of the golfing world were trained on the Masters this weekend, in the shadows, a rumor that won't go away was growing louder. Rory McIlroy is close to joining Live Golf. Two separate sources have told City and that they believe a deal is close. It is claimed that Live Golf Chiefs have offered world number two McIlroy an eye-watering $850 million to join. Plus around 2% equity in the competition, it would make him Live Golf's biggest signing so far and could be announced after the Masters, they said. It has not been possible to verify the claim. Spokespeople for the Northern Irish player in Live Golf did not respond to requests for comments. It is also not clear where he would fit in the current league format. Um, and then I saw another person on X who I don't think would have any reason to necessarily lie about this, but, but just whatever say that he was near Rory's father at the Cognizant and said on Twitter just now, this does not seem too far-fetched based on what I overheard from Rory's father at the Cognizant. I mean, that is fucking insane. That is like the, that's the craziest thing ever. We're talking about the Rory McIlroy, the man who would not shut up about the li Sorry, producer Tony, thanks for the... City Am is London's most read financial paper. Um, It does feel like... It, but is it... I mean, this is... I, I have a terrible memory. All this is documented. But over the last couple of years, anytime that we've 
I've seen the rumor mill get geared up about a guy going to live. I would I would argue that it feels like more times than not, it has eventually happened. I think Xander yeah. and Cantlay were two that have been rumored and at a certain point kind of reached a fever pitch that has not happened. But I mean, it does feel like when the when the rumor hits a certain level where it's not just like people being totally speculative, but claiming to have these sources and claiming to have heard this or that, and it starts to become a lot more smoke, it does seem that it 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 has more times than not come to fruition. Does that feel right to you? Well, yes. The only one I can really think of right off the bat, though, is obviously Tiger Woods, because you remember he was allegedly offered like a billion dollars. But other than that, though, pretty much every single time you heard about it, it immediately within a couple of days, that guy has his team. This is the team he's on. You know, he's on the flying squirrels, and and this is who he's playing. Hey, don't knock, don't knock squirrel mascots. Okay, I never would. I have one on my leg. I would never. It's true. How could I ever? Come on, I could. Never. Um, dude, and to 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 go with that is Rory's like subtle change of tone over the last couple of months. I think, Very especially subtle. since June sixth. Very, but it's been like growing and growing. It seems. Um, yeah. and th- I've said this about live all along and I, 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 I appreciate it about live right now is that these jokers are nimble. They, they are not locked into some 50 year, 60 year tradition of doing things the way they've always done it. They, and the, the, one of the funniest examples we have is that in between rounds of an actual event, they decided to let guys wear shorts. Like that's how nimble they are. If they want to add a team, you know, th- there were there were other reports this week about a at, at Augusta. Rom actually, I think Rom and Phil both spoke to it that Liv may be going to seventy two holes. If if they just up and decide they want to go to seventy two holes, they will. If they up and decide they want to add two more teams and new captains, they will. Yeah. There is nothing that seemingly ha- has them like so ingratiated into whatever thing they've always done for what, two years, three years, that that they're not willing to change. And so yeah. if, I, I think like questions about where he would fit, they don't, th- if Rory was, is willing to come over, they'll figure it out. Yeah, they'll, and he'll definitely be a captain of a team. Like, uh, yeah, he'll be an owner. He'll be a, well, it sounds like he'll be, sure, sounds like he'll have an equity totally. partner role yeah. in Liv overall, but I'm sure he'll also have it in, in a team if he goes. Which is so, fu- which is just so crazy with everything that he has said. I yeah, mean, but it's you, just yeah, so. I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, if I were him, I get it. If I'm him, I as a fan, I'm pissed off at what at everything Jay Monahan and everybody said for so long, and and all the things that they've done. Like to me, see, like okay, Christian in the comment, the ultimate sellout. The, Jay Monahan is the ultimate sellout. Yes. Like, to me, Jay Monahan said all these things, leveraged all these ideas and high, high morals and all this, all these virtues, and then flipped the script and is flying to Saudi and flying to the Bahamas to meet with Yasser and doing this and doing that. Oh, by the way, in the meantime, giving himself an effing raise. Yeah. That was $15 million a year. Nobody has failed upwards more and better than Jay Monahan in any sort of sports leadership role, maybe in my lifetime. I've never seen it. It's unbelievable. He, he He's done the worst job of commissioning the PJ Tour over the last couple of years, and he got like a 30% raise. Oh, and now he's got a board seat on the new PGA for profit. Like, what are we talking about? Like, he, he has been the sellout. Yo, Jay, Jay Monahan definite, definitely is the main problem here. I will say, not to compare, but Rob Manfred is, is Rob right Manfred there is also with the absolute season. worst of the worst who I, it literally tried ruining baseball. I've never yeah. seen anyone try to ruin their actual sport. And that's what it feels like Jay Monahan is doing. It almost feels like Jay Monahan is now comfortable with where he's at. He just got that raise. He's still making all this money. And he knows that there's going to be a deal down the line. At least I'm guessing that's what he thinks is going to yes, happen. 100%. So he really is just kind of coasting right now. And he's while he's coasting, 
all of these guys are just going to go to live and live is then going to just own the PGA because they're going to have everybody. I don't know what the plan is going to be going forward, but I'm going to go out on a limb and it's a, it's, it's a pretty strong, firm limb uh, that Roy McIlroy is going to live then for $850, $50 million. I'm sure of it. And he'll own I mean, a team. He'll run a team. And think about the freedom you would feel when you order queso and they say, do you want the small or large? And you just immediately can just go large. <laughs> in fact, in fact, that little vat of gold you have back there, bring that whole thing out to me. In fact, around a queso for the whole restaurant. Everybody, yeah, right. everybody in the restaurant everybody gets a large queso right. on me. Everybody gets queso on me. That's what I would do if I were $850 million richer. That's what I, I know. I would do that. I would pay for, I would, yeah, I would agree with you. I'd walk in that little Mexican spot down a couple blocks over where it costs me $26 for three tacos, rice, a little thing of queso, and a Coke. I'd walk in there and I'd say, free, free Mexican for everybody. Yeah. Not just the queso. I'll, yeah. I'll take all the tabs. So, um, yeah. I, I, I agree. I think it's happening. I think we've seen Rory signaling. He's he's been quieter. He's stepped down from being the one wearing the cape. He's and 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 at times he's even been vocal about being disappointed in how he he kind of got paraded out there to be the you know the guy standing guard over the PJ Tour for Jay Monahan. While meanwhile Jay just is hiding. Like I mean, can we also talk about? I mean, like think about how little we've seen of Jay Monahan. Like the guy hides constantly. Yeah, he you just up. saw him for the first time in for the players. That's yeah. it. He goes, he comes out for the players, and that's it. And so, like Rory signaled some things that he's pissed off and disappointed, feels used and abused. And I don't blame him. And I'm not the yeah. biggest Rory defender, but I don't blame him. So, yeah, you know what? I'm 30 something years old. I'm, 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 he's over the, the, the peak of his career, right? Like he's on the, not that he can't win anymore. He's freakishly talented. But at this yeah. point, $850 million. Yeah. Yeah. And ain't, None of y'all turning that down. I don't want to hear it. None of y'all are turning it down. Eight hundred fifty million dollars. Person, not a single person would turn. That you ain't turning it down, <laughs> especially after, like you just said, he's literally been. And I don't, I don't like that he said how he was mad about it. He did it himself. He just jumped out first before anybody else did it to, to did. try to defend the PGA, which is fine. Like we all appreciated that, but. The fact that guys like Jay Monahan didn't, you know, and then Jay Monahan saying, oh, we'll never do a deal. Then all of a sudden, one day, boom. By the way, we just did a deal with Liv, by the way, just to let you guys know. And I know we didn't tell any of you about it, but if I was Rory, I would have already been at Liv if I was Rory. Not, just, not just we'd never do a deal, but the 9 11 family, all the things that he did while also hiding for the most part over the last 18 months, hiding, gone. Yeah. And letting his superstars get out there and take it and answer questions every freaking week. Every freaking week, Rory is on the press schedule. Every week. And he's getting asked these questions. And he's probably – he's so now he's like, F it. I'm done. I'm over it. I'll just and if they want to offer me the money, I'll put my shorts on. I'll hit bombs wherever you tell me to hit bombs. Jetta, yeah. freaking Afghanistan. Any I don't care. I'll hit him wherever. For any muni million. anywhere. Just take me to the muni. Yeah. I'll fucking hit bombs. But, and, and so – this is why golf, why pro golf is struggling because of piss poor leadership, primarily thanks to Jay Monahan. Because you, and you can blame the you can blame the piff. I do think you can blame you can blame the piff. Well, they wanted it. action. They wanted action. Yes. He they love golf. Yasser loves golf. He loves professional golf. He called the tour. He called Jay years ago, trying to get a meeting, trying to set it up. Hey man, this is the real deal. We got cash, homie. We got a lot of it. You talk about liquid gold, wet cheese, and Mexican restaurants, oil money, baby. We got the cash. Let's yeah. talk. Let's figure out how we can do this together. Jay says no. Jay's a, ba Jay's a badass. Jay's in charge. That dude, in 20 years, we'll all look back at this and go, pro golf went through this whole dark, dark age because that dude's ineptitude. Because that dude's And I ain't just talking about the last two years. The last, whatever day he got the first email or the first phone call from, from those people – with billions and billions of dollars to blow. Unlimited money. Freaking blow. Like, like Rory would blow cash buying queso. Blow. They don't care. They don't have it. It doesn't have to be profitable. They don't care. They had money to blow. They were ready to compete. They're ready to come to the table and be partners. And he didn't answer the call. He is the reason we are in this bullshit. Yep. And, and now we have to deal with 
two professional golf leagues. One of them that's no fun to even watch, but is slowly gaining all of the. I actually kind of think it's low key fun to watch, depending on the venue. I guess it would depend. The consistency is very low, is what I guess. The consistency I would say. is off. The consistency of the what's fun to watch over at Live is just not there yet. Also, all of us not really understanding what is what. Like, I actually I, heard someone say this, and I can't remember who it was, and I couldn't agree more. Is Live just needs to trash these stupid teams, like all the stupid. Because I can't stand watching these guys wearing their logos of their of their teams, like at the Masters. It just looks so like it feels like it's literally like backyard baseball. Why does it bother? I don't understand why that bothers people. I saw that on on. I don't understand why is that bothersome. Because that's what it makes you think of. If you look at yourself in the mirror before you decided to come on this show, look at what you're wearing. This, this again, the Chicago Cubs, who've been an organization since the 1800s. But at some point, they had to start. And if they and if everybody was rocking merch in the 1800s, which they weren't, then people would be. So at some point, if you if you think if you if you think of yourself as a legitimate league, which they do, whether other people think about it, they're not. They think of themselves as a legitimate league. They're establishing legitimate franchises, which they are, and th- that's what they're attempting to do. This is not a sure. facade. Then, like, why not? Well, people wear dumb shit all the time. I agree, but I think the way that you just make it immediately more entertaining is that you you just go talk to TaylorMade, you talk to Adidas, you talk to Nike, you talk to Titleist, every every ma- massive manufacturer you can. So like, far hey. up the tour's ass in the golf channels. Like, that- they can't get, do anything. You get those guys to agree. Hey, we'll just make teams. Now we have team tailor made, team Titleist, team uh, team Nike, team team Ben Hogan, team whatever you. Yeah, want. but now these guys get to play whatever they want. They get they get to be cl- club agnostic. They can they can hit whatever they want. If they don't like Cobra, if they think Cobra sucks, no, no, no. Because if you're part of team tailor made, you're playing tailor made. I know that's what I'm saying. These guys they don't want to do that. They want to play what they want to play. They want to play what they've always played. They want to play what they like. They want to play good clubs. What if Taylor May decides that now that they got this live deal, now they want to start manufacturing garbage clubs? What if Bryson wants to 3D print his irons? Well, I'm sure Bryson will do that someday. He I'm did. Sure, uh, the- he literally did. He played them in the Masters. You know, were you under a rock with your buddies over the weekend? He 3D printed the irons he played with in the Masters the last four days. <laughs> I just broke Gutsy's brain. Wait a second. Yeah. No, no. Yes, no one, it's real. No, but hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. There's no way. Imagine telling the, uh, well, not you because you'd be like an embryo somewhere, but like the 20, the 2004 version of you. Like there's going to be a man that plays the, the Augustine, the, plays the masters and finishes in the top 10 or whatever with irons that he printed. So he, he he 3D printed irons and got them approved by the USGA weeks two weeks before Augusta. So they're just his own clubs. They're just I I guess Tony just dropped the Tony just dropped the what what is it Tony tell us first reported by Golf Week the, those irons are not just any irons 3D printed irons from Avado Golf eschewing the Ping I two thirty irons that he used at last week's live event. Okay, um, that that's, I mean, that's super impressive, DB. It is. It's, uh, um, okay. Okay. I, I've done a couple rants tonight. I didn't expect that. Um, oh, Tony just kicked Gussie off the show. <laughs> okay, there um, we go. I, 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 I had to go do something real quick. Uh, I've had a couple rants tonight I didn't see coming, uh, but I always had fun. I always have fun with you, Gutsy. I appreciate it. I always have fun with you, DB. We I'm always get into some good conversations. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we doing golf gurus and gamblers tomorrow? Or are you bet you bailing on me on that? Might bail. I'll let you know. Okay. All I'll right. Tune in for it tomorrow. We'll be there. Okay. I'm excited. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, click the like button if you think that Mexican cheese has gone too far and big big Mexican needs to calm down, and we should be able to pay a reasonable price for wet cheese in an American Mexican restaurant. Click the like button, subscribe, comment, Agreed. all that good stuff. Agreed. And bend over your bookies. See you. Bend them over. <laughs>